Shove it, man! Alright, the squad. You thought the last video was random? Well, think again. For years, I've often mentioned the elusive female wrestler known as Some Jobber Bolt. But the fact is, she wasn't actually a jobber. She was given a pretty big push. And it was really, really strange and random. I do remember being really attracted to this lady when I was a kid. But I don't remember her wrestling at all. So did she get this push due to her crazy matches or her mic work? Let's find out on Ring of the Hawk Season 4, where we watch back a short run with a company and shove the wrestler a final grade to see if they can do the JB to the HAWK. Off we go to the year 2008. TNA, a magic time where stars were shining, amazing matches were happening, there was a real optimism and buzz, and then suddenly, there's some job a bolt. But was it her fault? Well, whatever we need to learn from this video, we sure aren't going to learn anything from her debut match at Slammiversary 2008 when she squashed by Awesome Kong in just two minutes. This was an open challenge match to win $25,000. Way to look cheap, TNA. She does show some attitude with a slap and the crowd seem to like her, but she is in her hometown so it's bias. Check out this back fist from Kong. The Awesome Bomb kills her. Really hard to judge. A D for showing personality. Well, it's not likely to get any better for match two either, because once again, she faces Awesome Kong. She almost looks like a different person this time. Some jobber does get to throw some drop kicks and a flying forearm this time. Apart from that, she's sent into the steps and smacked down after an attempted dive. The spinning back fist kills her and Kong puts her in her grave with the Awesome Bomb. She's almost being eaten by the worms when Kong attempts a bomb through the chairs, but ODB saves Bolt. A hard match to judge again as she isn't getting to do much. Crowd do like her though, so it's a D. Match 3, tag match. The beautiful people, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky with Cute Kit versus the ultimate random jobber team of some jobber Bolt and Christy Hemi. Bolt starts for Angelina Love. Bolt gets the first knockdown before running into the Botox boot. Velvet has the tag and the beautiful people hit a devastating elbow drop. Bolt recovers and hits Velvet for crossbody for a two. Velvet puts the boot in and tries a submission, but the stunner frees Bolt and she tags Hemi. It takes about 30 seconds for Angelina Love to beat Hemi with the lights out. This isn't going well. Somehow the worst match so oh far is an no. F. Match 4. Some Jobber Bolt versus Christy Hemi. Well, this is the friendliest match so far. Some Jobber takes her down with a headlock takeover as they exchange leg scissors. Seemingly, Bolt gets stuck and she can't kip up. Bolt's embarrassed and she takes her down by the waist. Now a snap mirror into the dropkick. Somehow, that's the highlight of the video so far. Bolt drops an elbow for a two. Hemi suddenly goes Matrix style and they awkwardly run into each other. Christy Hemi then throws some martial arts kicks that a black belt would be jealous of. Bolt is able to stop her dive and slams her. She hits a running kick to Hemi's head for a two. Bolt can't hit the power bomb as Hemi reverses it into a victory roll and that's the three. Hemi hugs her after the match which causes Bolt to turn heel with a slap. A bunch of refs have to separate them. This could be a feud for the ages. It's a D. Match 5. 8 knockout street fight match. Some job a Bolt who is somehow on her fifth entrance song already and she teams up with Kong, Raka Khan and Saeed. Kong Fucius. They face Hemi in a hat, Roxy Laveau the elf, Taylor Wilde in a stun glasses hut and ODB, whatever she is. It takes ages for Bolt to come into the match. When she does she gets a hip toss straight away. ODB slams her and dances of happiness. Christy Hemi in now with an arm drag and an axe kick. They realise that Bolt is losing, so Kong just climbs into the ring and takes out Hemi from behind. I thought this was a street fight. No idea where Bolt goes now for the next few minutes. I looked around desperately trying to find some jobber, but I was unsuccessful. I finally managed to spot her as Taylor Wilde takes out the heels of a dive. She might work in a sunglasses hut, but she doesn't need no goggles to fly. Yes, yeah, a grandmaster sexy joke. Got a problem? Shove it. Raka Khan is beaten by Taylor Wilde. What a pointless Shove match, it. it's an S. As we enter 2009, Bolt realises she's far too much of a jobber on her own, so she stays with the Kongtourage. Match 6, Genesis 2009, number one contenders match. It's a six-person tag. ODB teams with Roxy and Taylor Wilde, and they take on the Kongtourage. Now, why any of Awesome Kong's faction would want a title shot against their scary leader is beyond me. It doesn't really make any sense. They've only just come together. Especially Raisha Saeed, her handler, for years. Some jobber will start with Taylor Wilde. Taylor tries a quick pinning attempt, then she tries another. Now she snaps off a Huracurana and Bolt dumps in her chaps of fear and tags Raisha. The match turns by the much more efficient Raisha. Bolt does rejoin the match with a middle rope elbow drop for a two. We quickly get a double down. It must be hard to get popularity when you have a partner dressed like Raka Khan. 
ODB has the tag and runs wild. Look at this one, this one's great. Roxy tries to smash Rucker and Bulk together, but Khan falls over. Now that's funny. Taylor dives on them. ODB beats Raisha Saeed. A pretty horrible match, oh, isn't it? We just don't have any evidence that she's anything but a jobber so far. On Impact, we get an interview where it's revealed that Bulk dislikes being called Sojo. Only her mum can call her that. She actually can cut a pretty good street promo. Then they play a video package about Bolt's story as a jobber. I was very interested to hear this because she's someone that I have no idea about. How did she get here? She is the youngest of 10 children. Borash tells a story about how Bolt beat up her boyfriend on a date at McDonald's. I wonder how much she paid her to do that. Terry Taylor spotted her on the indies, so I guess it's all his fault. I can't believe how much of a focus she's getting. She still hasn't done a thing. Match 7, 6 women street fight again. The Kong Taraj take on Roxy, Taylor Wilde and ODB. Surely after all the time spent on some jobber lately, it's time she did something in this match. Well, she doesn't start, so it's a bad start. When she does get in, she runs into the corner and gets arm dragged by Taylor. ODB slaps her in the chest too. Sojo desperately screams, tag me to Raka Khan. If anyone was wondering, because I was, somehow there's no new news on Raka Khan's problems with the law and the kidnapping trial. That case has been dragging on for years. Is that typical of the American legal system? As you can tell, nothing's happening in this match. She appears eventually on the ring apron with ODB. She can't land a move and gets a flapjack from ODB. Tags are made. These are honestly some of the most horrible women's matches of all time. Roxy punting Bolt in the chest is the highlight. Why is this a street fight? Roxy beats Raka Khan with a voodoo drop, it's an S. Another story about some jobber with everyone telling us how incredibly special she is. She tells all the female wrestlers if they want to be at the top of the wrestling game, you have to meet some jobber in the ring. Then for match 8, she proceeds to have a 2 minute match with ODB. It did have one positive though, I'm pretty sure this is the match that I became attracted to her. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm convinced that the current AEW camera people were the original TNA camera people. Bolt is destroyed by a flapjack and the stairs press before Awesome Kong causes a DQ. It's a C for the cameraman. I'm sorry, I've not seen her do a single move in 8 matches, what am I meant to be focusing on? Match 9, 4 on 1 handicap match, as booked by ring announcer Scott Steiner. He says he hasn't slept with any of them, so he doesn't know their names. Booker T says she's some relation to Thunderbolt. The Kong Taraj vs ODB. Bolt is crushed straight away. Bolt desperately hits shoulder thrusts in the corner. But ODB isn't hurt and almost small packages her. ODB awkwardly shoves into her and knocks her out the ring. The match carries on with Booker T making me cry with laughter on commentary. ODB takes out the Kong Taraj with a dive and then Kong kills her with the implant buster. It's over. Well, Thunderbolt sure isn't living up to her name. Oh, yes! It's an S. Match 10, number one contendership, knockout battle royal rumble. Why some job a Bolt is even getting this chance is beyond me. Bolt enters at number 4. She takes it to the beautiful people in Taylor World. Angelina almost gets a quick elimination. Roxy hits the ring with a kick to Sojo. And I ain't even her mother. Why did she have to enter so early in this match? How much of this am I going to have to sit through? It's not like she's going to win it either. Oh, for God's sake. Will someone please throw her out? It might as well just be a battle royal, by the way, because everyone enters and no one's been eliminated. Finally, ODB eliminates Raka Khan and Raisha. Good, now eliminate some jobber. She doesn't. Oh wow, Roxy tries a kick which Bolt catches and throws her backwards and she's eliminated someone. ODB's then on the ring apron doing her wacky gimmick and then there's a drop kick from Bolt to eliminate her. She's down to the final two and it's now pin or submission against Madison Rain. What a strange final two to have. Rain tries to roll her up twice, Bolt shuts her down with her knee and wants to throw Madison out the ring but she's forgotten it's pin or submission. Madison comes back at her with a crossbody for a two. Then out of nowhere, Bolt hits the very first move of the run, and what a move as she drops Madison on her face. Little did I know, she would never do it again. Bolt has randomly won the match. She is now the number one contender completely out of nowhere. Everybody looks really confused. I have to be fair, she won the match and got some eliminations. It's a B even if it makes no sense. Straight away, Bolt leaves the Kong Taraj because Kong is the knockouts champion. Match 11, tag match. Sun Jobber Bolt and Raka Khan take on Awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed. Gotta love this feud happening after they were only a group for a few weeks. Bolt and Saeed aggressively start this one. Saeed knocks her down with a roar. Thunderbolt responds with a fez press and tags Raka. 
Awesome Kong destroys Rakakan for a while. Eventually the tag is made and Bolt does some slaps and a sort of stunner move. Bolt attempts to finish her again but she can't manage it and instead she battles with Kong. The match becomes ugly. With Kong distracted, Usain Bolt is left alone with Saeed. She hits one kick and then wins with a backslide. Awesome Kong's a bad loser and batters both of them. She gives Sojo a power bomb on top of Rakakam. A fairly enjoyable segment, even if the match was nothing to write home about. It's a C. Match 12, Destination X 2009. Now let's watch the world's most random knockouts title match. Third time she's faced Kong so far, none of her attempts have gone longer than two minutes, so let's see if she does any better. The drop kicks won't take Kong down. They talk about how quick she is, just as she sent into the corner and struggles to climb. She dives and just sort of slops into Kong. Kong smacks her down. Now Awesome Kong ragdolls her around the ring. The crowd are in silence as Bolt tries a comeback and Bolt is shoved down. Awesome Kong choke slams her but doesn't pin her properly. Awesome Kong does miss a middle rope dive and she's almost rolled up a couple of times. The manager tries to get involved but she kicks away. Awesome Kong's overzealous now and she ends up falling outside of the ring. Weird moment as Bolt tries to do something but Kong won't let her. Bolt desperately tries rapid fire elbow drops. She also wants to dive again but struggles to dive before hitting a double axe. This match is horrible. She dives yet again but this time Kong catches her and hits the awesome bomb for the free. Why was this a pay-per-view match? Was there anything here that impressed you? This was supposed to be a big showing, but she wasn't showing anything. It's an S. Match 13, Lockdown 2009, Queen of the Cage match. Madison Rain versus some jobber Bolt, whose new hair really doesn't suit her, versus Daphne versus ODB. The winner of this match receives a punch to the gut and a pack of cigarettes. Madison shoves her into a roll-up from Daphne. Unfortunately, it's not over. Madison and Bolt work together for a bit. She holds ODB whilst Madison gives her the weakest gut punches of all time. I think she hits a full Nelson slam on ODB. It didn't look great. Together they then slingshot ODB into the cage. Now they work on Daphne. Nothing's happening. Cody Dina feeds ODB from a flask which fires her up. Bolt is squashed in the corner and hit with a Scott Hall special. Sojo manages to kick her in the head just once before Daphne kills her with a fisherman's buster. Then the match randomly ends with ODB spraying beer in Sojo's face and she's beaten her by a power slam. Guess what? It's another oh, no. S. She can barely manage anything as usual. At least, that surely kills off any chance of her ever being anything other than some job of bolt. Match 14. Number one contendership ladder match. Why? Was this necessary? Some job of bolt versus Taylor Wilde. They both instantly climb, but Bolt randomly falls. She pushes Taylor off the ladder, who fires up with kicks. Bolt is whipped into a ladder in the corner. Taylor climbs a quarter of the way up the ladder. Bolt stops her with a back suplex. Now Bolt climbs a quarter of the way up the ladder. Taylor stops her with an electric chair drop. Some jobber pulls out brass knuckles. The ladies climb the ladder where Bolt smacks her one. Taylor falls and Bolt is once again the number one contender. I just don't understand. It's a D because she hit one move. Match 15, knockouts title. The champion is Angelina Love versus some jobber Bolt. Bolt doesn't even get an entrance. She starts with a double leg into a jackknife pin for a one. She gets another one off a roll up before being sent into the turnbuckle. Love comes back with a knee to the head followed by the Botox injection which surprisingly is just a two. Then out of nowhere Bolt connects with a Samoan drop which I'm just not okay with under any circumstances. Samoan drop should just be saved for Samoans of fat girls and Bolt is neither. When they get back up Bolt takes Angelina Love straight back down with a flapjack. She's putting on a wrestling clinic in there. Velvet Sky then causes a distraction which allows Angelina Love to spray Thunderbolt in the face and the beauty mark gets Angelina Love the win. A two minute title match where she somehow hit double the moves in any previous match because she hit two moves. It's a D. It was at this point that Bolt was involved in one of the legendary bad TNA matches. She was in the corner of Booker T's wife Charmel as she faced Jenna Maraska who had Kong in her corner. The highlight for Bolt was trying to get involved in the match when she's knocked off the ropes and Kong doesn't try very hard to catch her. Match 16, Battle Royal. It doesn't go well and Taylor Wilde eliminates her with a kick. I'll save my breath and let you Suck, guess. Son, Match 17, yes. Christy Heme versus some jobber Bolt who doesn't get an entrance. A very slow match where she gets a brand new move from Sojo of a backbreaker. She also hits a slingshot elbow drop but doesn't make a pin. She can't get Christy Heme up for a powerbomb as Heme throws her overhead and she falls on her own head. The crowd groan. 
Hemi hits her with a crossbody then, which Sojo rolls over. She tries to deadlift Hemi up and power her up, and she struggles and struggles. No, she can't manage it. She gives up. That was awkward. Someone in the crowd is loudly laughing at her. If you can't lift up Christy Hemi, who is about as light as they come, your career is dead. Hemi wins with the FFG. Well, I've got another letter for her. Oh, it's an man. S. Match 18, final match, tag match. Just some job of Bolt tagging up with Hamada. One of these things is not quite like the other. They take on Christy, Hemi and Tara. The proper wrestlers go at it for a while. It's pretty good stuff. Unfortunately, Sojo Bolt is going to have to get in there at some point. She kicks Tara in the face. Tara quickly trips her up and slams her and tags in Hemi, who hits her with her crotch. Just a two. Bolt is losing, so she tags out. For some reason, Hamada's stupid and keeps tagging Bolt back in. Maybe she's confused. Tara looks like she almost kills her on a clothesline. When she gets up, Tara precision punts her in the head with Hamada having to break up the pin. Hemi gets rid of Hamada and Tara beats some job of Bolt with the Widow's Peak. Game over, SNS. <laughs> Hamada is so annoyed about the loss that she wipes out Bolt with the Hamada driver. A fitting way to end this run. Bolt lying crushed on the mat where she belongs. For years, Bolt hung around in the TNA developmental territory OVW like a bad stench, clinging on for one last shot at the big time. She stayed there for so long that she became a seven-time women's OVW champion. You'd think she'd take the hint. She went on to own and run her own wrestling promotion, Queens of Combat, which actually had a lot of big names come through. A lot of women wrestlers who are famous now, and from what I've seen, it was pretty good. So I'd say this was the highlight of Bolt's career in wrestling. That promotion does seem to have wrapped up in 2020 though. Let's be honest, this isn't going to be a good final grade, is it? It took until match 8 for her to hit her first move. She was involved in some hilarious botches, ones which really sucked the life out of the crowds, and unfortunately for her, it was often on pay-per-view where she made her mistakes. Looking back, I still find this whole thing bizarre. Why did TNA think this was the woman to push? It's beyond me. What I will say is she was pretty good on the mic, so maybe she should have been a manager, or like an Attitude Era diva. I do get the sense that that's not what she wanted to be though. Whatever. Bolt is some jobber from now until forever. And if you don't agree with that, you're just not clever. I do like those shorts though.